Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. It's Friday the 13th, Tony. Have you been unlucky today? I'm Tony Kornheiser, not yet, but we still may have to do a Sports Center segment. That would change everything. You know, you're, you're not blessing the Sports Center segment. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a superstitious so was, person, so I don't really care. I am sort of superstitious, but I was born on the 13th. 13th yeah. So I am not. Friday the 13th doesn't bother me at all. I sort of welcome okay. it. Okay. But yeah, I have ridiculous superstitions which cause me to refer to amulets and chains and things and rings. You, <laughs> you don't want to know. Go you don't want to know. Rabbit welcome hole. to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, the Bills roll, the Bengals talk trash. They do. And Aaron Judge hasn't hit a homer in 16 games. But we begin today with Tua Tungavailoa and the concussion he suffered in the third quarter of last night's Dolphins-Bills game. Tua left the game under his own power. This is the third diagnosed concussion he has suffered in the NFL, and there is no timetable for his football future. Wilbon, your thoughts on what you saw and the decision the Tua faces. Well, Tony, I was, I was watching that game live last night when Tua went down, and I'm thinking, wow, it wasn't that it wasn't a head to head hit. It didn't seem that hard. It wasn't straight on. Yet you could see him crumple, like as it happened. And then he has that 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 fencing response. And you're like, or you know, a milder version of it maybe than he had two years ago. But you're like, oh my goodness, no, 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 not not Tua again. And so I, I just looked at it, and you start immediately going through the questions. You know, but my first one, what not was what does this mean? Is he going to get back in the game? I was, I was way past right. that. Like, what do you do? Yeah. Like, what is what happens yeah. to your career? What happens to this thing that you have practiced your life for and prepared your life for to have? And you've gotten pretty high up on the ladder, right? And you are successful at this thing, and you're making money, and you've made seventy million or whatever it is, but you got another hundred and sixty or so left on the table for you to collect and change your family's. Life is generational wealth. What happens? And I just go, man, I, I, I don't want to see this happen. And was glad, Tony, when he could get up and walk in a way that he could not yeah. two years ago. Yeah. So I thought, okay, this isn't as bad as it was before and not as bad as it could be. Yeah, I think it's important that we note that we have had this discussion about this player many times before. Yeah. We are getting near the territory where you use a word like tragedy. This is many concussions for him. He has had other significant injuries. The irony can't be lost that, as you say, it looked, it appeared to be a very ordinary tackle, and it was done by DeMar Hamlin, who How about that? a couple of years ago had cardiac arrest yeah. on a football field. Um, so you look at this and you wonder, okay, what, what happens next? I assume that Tua would want to play next. Again, of course he would. He's a very good football player, but is football actually good for him? I just want to take a couple of seconds to single out the coach of the Miami Dolphins, Mike McDaniel, for what he did in the aftermath of this concussion. He walked to a, off the field and kissed him on the head. Yeah. I was so moved by that. I felt that everything he has said to this point, Mike, everything that he has said is what you would want from a coach or a friend yes. or a father. We, we, don't, we don't know how it's going to end. I'm skittish about, I am skittish about the end because you have to have medical opinions. You have to have family opinions. You have to have Tua's opinion, you know, and, and you... What you want most of all is for the rest of his life after football to be good, to be okay. and you just don't know when that's to going okay. to start. Or if you it, don't or know if it, when that's going to start. If it will start. be. If it will be. Yeah. And if yes, Tony would live real you quickly, the reminder to me, as someone who played everything Sandlot and never football at any level that mattered, not even in high school, is that it is so dangerous just to be out there. Just to be out there. When you see Hamlin collide with yeah. Tua, yeah. I mean, yeah. that, that yeah. should stop yeah. and give everybody pause. And I know even players because it, hardened because guys Mike, gave them pause. Mike, it feels like it's a well-written script yes, a warning. that is designed to get Tua to consider how much more football Man, he wants he take, to play. Yeah, maybe so, Tom. The Bills won the game in a romp. 
James Cook scored three touchdowns. Jamarcus Ingram had two interceptions, including a pick six. And Josh Allen had no turnovers. Josh Allen, now 12-2 and two against the Dolphins in his career. So, Tom, what did the result of this game tell you about each of these teams? Well, I can't speak to the Dolphins because they're in flux now until they settle yeah. their quarterback situation. They're going to put in the backup guy, Skylar Thompson, and, and, and all, we can know, all we can know for sure right now is he's not doing. He, he's not doing. But I can speak to the Bills because there's no haze around the Bills. They've scored 65 points in two games, and they're 2-0, and oh, and that's pretty good. This is the first full year that Joe Brady, right? Joe Brady is the offensive coordinator. He's running the ball like crazy. He's run the ball 59 times in two games, and he's only passed the ball 42 times in two games, which feels like he's trying to protect Josh Allen a little bit. Josh Allen last year in six different games threw the ball at least 40 times. He has now thrown it 23 and 19. Mike, in 94 games that he's played for the Bills as a quarterback, only seven times has he thrown it less than 23 times out there. So there's a change in the way the Bills are orienting their offense at this point. And they look, you know, they look quite good at the moment. They Tony, do. they do. You know what? I don't think of him, Brady, as protecting Allen as much as I just think this is the way they ought to play. First of all, you can't protect Josh Allen because he's going to okay. do things like fly through the air like he did last week when he only threw 25. He can, in two plays, he can be reckless. That's who he is. That's his personality. He's bigger and stronger yeah, I agree. than most. I agree. And he knows it. But I think this is the I think power football is the way that this Bills team, they look pretty good doing it so far. I know it's a small sample size, just the two games. But Josh Allen doesn't need to fling it around. If you've got that offensive line, and you've got a team with that personality and a quarterback with that personality. If you're bigger and stronger, then damn it, be bigger and stronger. You don't have to float yeah. like a butterfly. You don't have to do that. So I like the no, way the right. Bills are playing. And you're right about Miami. We yeah. don't know anything about them now. They're Nothing. running it. The Bills are running it and eating up the clock. Yes, they and, are. And that is a good thing. Because actually, and well, let's get back to Josh Allen. You don't want to give him that many opportunities to fly through the air <laughs> right. and hurt himself if you them. can avoid it. Since Brady has been the offensive coordinator, the Bills are 8-1 and one in the regular season and 1-1 one and one in the playoffs. And the only two teams they they've lost to They should have won in the playoffs. Are the Eagles and the Chiefs. Yeah. He, and those are good should've teams. Should have won that game. Those are yeah. good teams. All right, we'll stay with football and we will move to the 0-1 Cincinnati Bengals. The other day, DB Cam Taylor-Britt said disparagingly of Chiefs speedster rookie Xavier Worthy, this is a quote, he can run straight, he can't do too much else, unquote. Yesterday, wideout Jamar Chase said this, a quote, we are the team to beat in the AFC. Everybody knows that, bro, unquote. <laughs> Wilpon, are the Bengals in a place to be talking so much trash ahead of Sunday's game against the Chiefs in Kansas City? You know, the Bengals are nobody. They're nothing historically. They've been in, what, three Super Bowls, I guess? Or is it still two, three? I guess it's three Super Bowls. They haven't won any of them. The Bengals nope. are, you know, and also ran. The Bengals are triple-A. The Bengals, for most of their history, have been somebody's homecoming opponent. So, you know, seriously. Now, I, I do, I must say, they've become interesting because of Joe Burrow and largely Jamar Chase. And now Jamar Chase is out there running his mouth after not even being around for, you know, camp. He's around for it, but not participatory. This now has a, I've got to watch this. I've got to yeah. see this game. If they back it up, Tony... God bless them if they can back it up against the two-time champs. But I, I'm not taking Cincinnati in this matchup. Not now. Not after they run their mouths and they got to play against the Chiefs out there. Now, there's no such thing in the second game of the season as a must game. And no, I know we would no, agree on that's that. That's right. We do. But if Cincinnati were to win this, they'd shut everybody up. I got to give them that. They would shut everybody up. This is, to me... This is the classic definition of bulletin board material. Yeah. You take on a rookie and you say, he's really nothing. He can just run in a straight line. And then you say, we're the best team out here. Okay, a couple of hard facts. You're 0-1. You scored, I think, 10 points against New England. New England's a terrible team. You lost to a terrible team. So if you say, we're the team to beat, a terrible team just beat you. They just actually did this. So I'm, I'm just not convinced that that 
the Bengals are taking the right move here. You talk about Jamar Chase. I didn't even know he was going to play this year. Like, he was <laughs> holding out. He's mouthing ago. off. We didn't even know he was going to be in. I love Joe Burrow. I loved him in LSU. I loved him when he had the cigar after the national championship. He did nothing in game one. Every nothing. armchair doctor in but America is talking wrist. about his wrist. He's shaking his That's wrist. That's what they do. That's they talk about his wrist. So, yeah. so it, is, it, it strikes me as fairly risky business to be mouthy when you're going to play the Chiefs in this Kansas City. This is cool, City. though. Maybe you you got to take a side. You got to take the side. Are you with the Bengals going into this game? Do you want to see them beat back the champs? Or do you want to see the Bengals get trashed for running their mouths, having done They're nothing their in mouths. their whole history? They practiced yeah. under the highway, under a bridge, yeah. like it trolls. Are you kidding me? You've been there, spiny or I've spinny there, field. I forget what it was called. Peter King took me there yeah, once. I was like, a professional team practices here? Literally. Oh, my under a God. Highway. It's kind of cool, though. It's Literally. Cool. Let's take a break. Coming up, Aaron Judge has not hit a home run in 16 games. What's the word for that? Could Shohei actually take the mound in the postseason? That sounds like Mike from other shows. Last night, literally, when, when McDaniel kissed him on the head. Yeah, that's great. Very that was cool. Very, Very cool. moving. McDaniel's done all I can't, the right things. He says all yes. the right things all the time. I really like him. Never met him. Really like him. But will he let him play again? The Bush guy. Time to put in a good word or two. What's first? It's blank that Aaron Judge has not hit a home run in 16 straight games. My word is deja vu, because this is how Judge's season started, Mike. First 34 games, he's batting 200. He has six home runs. That's a pace for 28. Then he gets crazy, wildly hot. Next 94 games, he's hitting 382 with 45 home runs. That's a pace of 78 home runs. Then he goes in the dumpster again recently, <laughs> and in these 16 games, He's batting 207 with zero home runs, and that's a pace for zero home runs, okay? The Yankees have 15 games left. I assume he's going to hit some home runs, but I would not know where the number is. I couldn't go over under because I'm not comfortable even thinking about how many he's going to get. Tony, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to think about how many home runs he's going to get. It's irrelevant that he's gone that many games consecutively without a home run. Juan Soto hit one last night to win the game, didn't he? The Yankees are two yep. games up on Baltimore in the division. They're a game up on Cleveland. They got the best record in the American League. Who cares? I mean, he's already got 50-plus. Nobody's going to catch him. I guess for a major league lead, I guess Otani could catch him, but he's not going to catch him. Yeah. So you got these 15 oh. games left. And listen, Tony... He's had a great season already. He doesn't have to get to 60. It doesn't matter. And he's probably going to bust out correction. of it and hit three or four more anyway. One small correction. Soto won the game with a single. Single. Game okay. Single. Sing, Soto's great Won a game. Yanks when, two when games Soto up. signs that contract, it's going to start with a five. Yeah. 500 yeah, million. Alive. What's next? It would be blank if Shohei Otani were to pitch in the postseason. My word is Ruthian. Babe Ruth did this for the Red Sox. If Shohei does this, he's right there. In the 1916 and 1918 World Series, Ruth pitched for the Red Sox. Listen to this line. He goes 31 innings. He's 3-0, and and his ERA is 0-8-7. That's pretty good. But he batted poorly. He was only 1-for-11 in the series, so that's, he's batting under a buck. And Shohei, I know, is going to bat better than that. The reason this comes about is that the Dodgers manager... Dave Roberts said on radio today, and there's a direct quote here, that not only is he not ruling out Shohei pitching in the postseason, but the quote is, if things line up, great. And then he said, if that happens, you know, that would be storybook. Look at Dave Roberts playing what's the word. Look at him. I hear you on what Dave Roberts said. Let me say something. It ain't happening. And so that's my word. Not happening. They're not going to throw Shohei out there in October for the first time. You know what that would be? That would be another word. Stupid. They're not going to risk 
the greatest player in Major League Baseball today, all right, because if it's not Judge, it's Otani, you're not going to put him in, in, in harm's way like that. You're not going to just trot him out there after a few bullpen assignments cleared? or go into AAA what for him. Stop it. What if he's you know better. Pitch? You don't just walk off the street in professional sports and do anything well. People try this every now and then, and it looks stupid. It backfires because it doesn't work. They're not going to do this. But Otani is a form of gamesmanship. Mike? What? Mike, he, he's the unicorn. Nobody he has is. ever pitched and hit like he's him. He's not. You want to so bet me now? Can. You want to bet me now? No. He is not I tend to agree with this you, October. but I'd love to see it. Not half. Love to see it. Not well, maybe November. Maybe November. That's the last word. Winter league and Let's take one last break. Still to come, the Steelers provide an update on Russell Wilson's status. And the new coach of U.S. men's soccer, he's got big ambitions. Maybe he can get Shohei. I hope so. Maybe Shohei can come yeah. out and play some midfield for him. And kick. Maybe he can kick for him. You know, yeah. he'd be he the, ought to have big ambitions. He'd be the... Happy time, people. Happy 57th birthday, Michael Johnson. One of the great all-time sprinters. Johnson won four Olympic gold medals, a 4 by 400 relay gold in Barcelona, the 200 and 400 in Atlanta, and the 400 again in Sydney. Johnson held the world record in the 200 for 12 years. He held the world record in a 400 for 17 years. Now wow. Johnson has started Grand Slam track, where he will put on track meets around the world. Johnson has already signed 400 meter hurdles gold medalist Sidney McLaughlin Lavroni, 1500 meter gold medalist Cole Hawker, and Olympic medalist Fred Curley and Kenny Benarek. I am for this. I like to watch track. Any race, any distance. No ambiguity in the winner. Tony, you know I completely agree with you on that and how we both feel about track and field. And I just think Michael Johnson, you, you outlined what he's done. He's like the most underrated and he's just ignored almost in terms of the discussion of great Olympians, great American Olympians. People don't mention them. Hey, pay attention. Start to mention Michael Johnson, just a hell of an athlete. Gold shoes, baby. Gold yeah. shoes. Not so happy anniversary, Arkansas State. On this day 10 years ago, <coughs> excuse me, in an attempt to distract the Miami Hurricane punt coverage team, the Red Wolves employed the fainting goat gambit. <laughs> Arkansas State receiver Booker Mays fell flat on his back to you divert attention from the fake punt Arkansas State was about to run. The play failed miserably. Miami's Raphael Kirby intercepted the pass thrown by the Arkansas State punter. Clearly, nobody on Miami gave a thought to the fainting goat, making me wonder who in football history did, and how could this fainting goat last long enough for Arkansas State to try it? I like fake punts and fake field goals, but a guy falling down? You know, that must have worked like 80 years ago when somebody was running the wing tee. Plus that, you got a man in yeah. motion, and you got things going on over there already. It looks like he could have, you know, just fall and tripped over somebody's ankle. It just looked poorly designed. But I bet you we can find out it worked like 80 years ago somewhere. So did I 80 years ago. Happy trails, Derek Bender. The Twins cut the minor league catcher after he reportedly told opposing hitters what pitches were coming in last week's game that eliminated his team, the Fort Myers Mighty Muscles, from playoff competition. The game was won by the Lakeland Flying Tigers, 6-0 and Lakeland coaches notified Fort Myers coaches about the breach after the game. Bender had reportedly told teammates that he wanted the season to be over. Ugh. You got your wish. Ugh. They gave you some more layers to this, right? Right, Tony? But this is so much worse than, you know, some of these betting things you hear about. This is worse to me. You're a traitor. You're just aiding the other team in live time. And that, that's a result of some kind of ban, not just the season being over. Yeah, well, not only is the season over, but his career is probably over. This, uh, you Indeed. can't do this. No, you can't. It's, it, it's, it's, it's it's worse than It bad. appears worse to be incredibly bad. selfish and, and self-destructive. One omission, the Packers listed Jordan Love as questionable for Sunday's game against the Colts. What do you think that means, Wilbon? They're just, just subterfuge. It's just mind games. That, that, don't get me started with taking shots at the cheese heads. Come on now. 
All right, we go to the big finish. Let's Mike Tomlin says Russell Wilson is questionable uh, for Sunday's uh, game at the Broncos. What does that mean? He could play if he had to. I mean, he feels goes out and has a terrible game. I hope he certainly doesn't. I hope he doesn't get hurt, but he could play. Russ, Hollywood Brown of the Chiefs will have surgery, missing these four games with a shoulder injury. That's a big loss, isn't it? He hasn't played yet. They were counting on him. He would help them a lot, but if Xavier Worthy is this good, maybe they don't need him. New USA men's soccer coach Mauricio Pochettino said today, quote, we need to believe we can win. Not win just a game, but to win the World Cup, unquote. You like that ambition? Yeah, it might be a little delusional, but it's easy for me to like it sitting here. I'm going to get some players. Colorado at Colorado State tomorrow. Uh-oh. Are the Buffs going to rebound? I don't know. These two coaches had bad blood last year. This might be a game worth watching. It might it, be. It really I'm might be. watch this. Last one, number four, Alabama at Wisconsin Ooh. tomorrow. Ooh. Who you got, Mr. Big Ten? Ooh, we we got, got more cheesehead talk. These cheeseheads, the ones who play in Madison, they're going to melt in 85-degree heat in the upper Midwest in the middle of September. Melt. This sounds like Alabama by 25, but I'm rooting for the cheeseheads. I am. I'm rooting for the conference, rooting for the Big Ten. We're out of time. We'll try and do better the next time. I'm Tony Kornhuis. I'm Mike Wilbon. Have a great weekend, knuckleheads. You can get the podcast on the app or Apple Podcasts. And now... So would that be grilled cheese heads? <laughs>